Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. My name is Tim Nguyen. I work for the Health Emergency Program at WHO, and here I'm responsible for the part that we're calling an infodemic. So, if we stop and think about the concept of contagion, we all envision different things. Maybe you think about the 2011 Hollywood thriller starring Matt Damon. Maybe you conjure a memory about a time you laughed so hard with a friend you couldn't stop. Or maybe you just think about your current day-to-day -day reality and experience a flood of emotions about the uncertainty of the world around us. Contagion is a phenomenon that comes in many forms. And one that may be less obvious is this contagion of information. At the WHO, we call this an infodemic, or rather a tsunami of information, some accurate, some not, that spreads alongside a disease outbreak and can result in physical harm if not managed well. So what makes this COVID-19 infodemic so special? We now live in two intertwined worlds, the physical and the digital world, and both spheres are connected. In the digital age, with broad access to social media, infodemic management is more challenging. Indeed, rumors or fake news are rapidly amplified and spreading further and faster than ever. From January to April 2020, 82% of early online COVID-19 posts were inaccurate. It is also clear that with new technologies, everyone is an author, an editor, and a disseminator of information consciously or unconsciously. So what is the immediate impact of an infodemic? First, it can kill. People can take harmful drugs or remedies while believing it is a miraculous cure for COVID-19. For instance, some people ingested surface disinfectants and hand sanitizers, believing it would protect them from COVID-19. Second, it can undermine public health response. People do not adopt the recommended behavior to stop transmission. For instance, they may organize parties with a large number of friends before visiting their grandparents. Thirdly, it fuels mistrust towards the science, healthcare workers and health authorities, which in the end, undermines social cohesiveness, increases stigma and widens social rift. And we all know that trust is an essential component of an effective response. So what can research do better to manage the current COVID-19 infodemic and all future infodemics? For this, we organized a scientific conference to better understand the impact of infodemics on societies. And here are the key research questions that were raised and need answering. How do overwhelming amounts of information affect behavior in emergencies and what interventions are effective in addressing it? Second, how does online behavior affect offline action? Third, how does the infodemic affect cognition and influence seeking of health services? Fourth, how does the role of policy intervention successfully address and mitigate health misinformation? Fifth, how does the infodemic affect closed information networks and vulnerable populations? Information can be a contagion, but if we better know how to create, communicate and share the right information at the right time in the right format for communities and individuals to take the right action, then this is how we will end the COVID-19 pandemic.